Given that you felt that uh, waterboarding and the enhanced interrogation broke him, if, you, if somebody else was caught today, wouldn't you want to use the same techniques? I think that I would be very tempted to use the same techniques. I, I, in, other words, like, in your view, they, they do work. I, yes, they do work. No doubt about but that. But like a lot of Americans, I think I, I, I'm involved in this, this internal intellectual battle with myself, weighing the idea that waterboarding may be torture versus the quality of information that we, that we often get after using the waterboarding technique. And I struggle with it. I think like a lot of people do, where, like I said earlier, we're Americans and we're better than this and we shouldn't be doing this kind of thing. But at the same time, what happens if we don't waterboard a person and we don't get that nugget of information and there's an attack on a, on a movie theater or a shopping mall or, or in midtown Manhattan you know, at rush hour, then, then what do we do? I, I would have trouble forgiving myself. We've reported that the director of the CIA, uh, Michael Hayden, has banned waterboarding, at least for now. Yes. It hasn't been used. Yes. And maybe since uh, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. Did he make the right decision, do you think? I think he probably did. I, th I, think I don't think it's permanently banned, but for the moment it for is. For the moment it is. I think that we've, we've gotten up and running it, to, the, to the extent that we're, we have enough information coming in from an, enough different kinds of sources that we do have a handle on, on Al-Qaeda operations as they're being planned, at least right now, and that waterboarding is unnecessary. But you know, the, the months after September 11th were different because we were, we were really reactive at the time, and we were, we were stunned by the by the magnitude of, of the attacks on September 11th. And we were afraid that something of, of equal um, uh, scope was, was in the works. And we were really trying to do anything that we could to stop another major attack from happening. And I don't think we're in that mindset right now. I think we're chasing them all over the world. I think we've had a great deal of success chasing them, not just by ourselves, but with other, with other governments. And uh, as a result, waterboarding, at least right now, is unnecessary. And it's your view that Al-Qaeda has been foiled, that it wasn't because they couldn't do it again, but because I think efforts we, by the U.S. and others stopped them from doing it. We've disrupted them, yes. There are hundreds and hundreds of patriotic Americans working for very little money with no vacation and no sleep and no time with their families, working in horrible parts of the world just to make sure that another attack doesn't occur. Why did you leave the CIA? Were you upset with yourself, what you did? No. I loved the CIA. I still love the CIA. Uh, but I'm a middle-aged guy. I have four children. And I wanted to spend more time with my family. And I thought that, you know, there, there's more to life than just running to the four corners of the earth on six hours notice to meet some terrorist. And uh, I wanted to just spend more time at home.